is 531, and I will hereby call to order this unregularly scheduled meeting of the Sunday Glen Select Board. Um, again, time is uh, 531. Our first order of business this evening will be to approve the minutes of our last meeting from March 5th, 2024. I motion we approve the minutes of March 5th. All right, since Dan is not here, I will second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Two nothing. Do you need us to do uh, I Nathaniel wearing with because we're remote or? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I yeah. Nathaniel wearing. I Crystal Drake John Bly. Great. Thank two you. one. Uh, two nothing. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Our first order of new business will be uh, public wares, um, Delta and sand and gravel. You want to give us a quick brief on that? Yeah. So this is just to certify them so that they can weigh vehicles um, at the gravel pit. So they have five people that they're looking for, and it needs to be renewed annually. Um, this year, the five people are TJ Conroy, Melinda Gibbons, Bridget Hannon, Brooke Hastings, and Craig Warner. All right, and you just need a, a motion to recertify those five people? Yeah. Crystal? So I motion that we appoint the five people mentioned as the public wares. Seconded. All right, we have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Nathaniel Waring. Two, uh, Aye. two zero. Aye. <clears throat> Great, thank you. All right, simple enough. Uh, next up, we have the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Services District. Jeff? Yeah, before uh, Crystal, it looks like you're trying to join. Did you try to enter with a different device? Yeah, so I'm trying to get it in on my laptop only because okay. my laptop needed to upgrade, and I'd rather switch to the laptop if you let me in, and then I'll hang up this one. No, but I just wanted to make sure it was really you. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so... Um, Upper Pioneer Valley Veteran Services District. Um, we've been a member since before I got here. They provide the um, veteran services for Sunderland residents who are veterans. Um, beginning, uh, previously you just voted to enter and you were in. Um, beginning this year, we need to vote every two years to remain part of it. So, um, as of right now, there we haven't really investigated alternatives um, as far as providing services for veterans. Um, but uh, if that is something you want me to look into, I can. But um, I don't think we've had any concerns um, with the existing organization. Yeah, unless we, we have a, a good reason to go looking for other options, if it's what we've been using and if we've been happy with it. I don't see a, a need to, to make that more complicated than we need to. Crystal, do you have any opinion on that? I agree. All right. Uh, I would entertain a motion to um, apply to re-up our membership to the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Services District. Uh, so moved. All right. Seconded. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Crystal Drake Tremblay. Aye. Nathaniel Waring. Two nothing, Jeff. Thank you. All righty. And then our last new business is um, operating budget review. Yeah. So it looks like right now, with a lot of caveats, um, we have about $146,000 more in spending than we do in revenues coming in. Um, the major caveats being that we right now we're not including any um, free cash in this calculation. Usually we use about a hundred thousand. Uh, last year we used one hundred and seventy thousand, um, and there there are some expanded services. I'd say uh, even though we asked for level services, um, you know we talked about the South County EMS budget. Last night, I had a good meeting with the, the chief today, um, and hopefully we'll see a, a more gradual increase to get where he wants to go. Um, 
And oh, there was also the, the police requested a new full time officer. This might not be the year to do that. So there could be some um, avoided costs there. But it, uh, we do need to start taking a, a look at some of the bigger ticket items, um, notably insurance. You know, there, I think. I would not recommend uh, increasing the employer share two and a half percent this year. I don't think on top of an eight percent increase in insurance, um, that's reasonable. And I think unfortunately, we're probably gonna have to look at what some of the benefits are um, that we're currently providing in order to be able to afford insurance. Um, but if I don't know if the select board is, or anybody on the finance committee has had an opportunity to look at the budget, had any thoughts or areas you wanted me to explore. Um, uh, and I think a lot of it hinges on the school budget that we're going to be hearing later today. Um, so I think that you know, after we get that, that's sort of one of the last big pieces of the puzzle. Um, we can spend more time kind of crunching the numbers and then we can figure it out. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to really figure out what direction we want to move there, um, other than just acknowledging that it is a very tight year with a lot of with a lot of increases and whatnot. Yep. Okay. So I know you said you spoke with the chief at South County EMS. Mm -hmm. Would we be expecting a new budget there or? Um, I, that, that, that was my impression <laughs> leaving the meeting. Um, he's presenting the budget to the Deerfield Select Board and Finance Committees on Monday night. So, um, I thought it would be helpful to see if they had the same reaction that we had on this side of the river. Um, my guess is that, that, you know, Deerfield has a lot of projects going on, um, so that, so they probably, you know, I, I don't know what they're going to say, but I, I wanted to see yeah. Deerfield's reaction. And then, you know, maybe they had some ideas for how, how the budget might come in a little bit lower. But yeah, I, yeah, I expect to, have to follow up with another one. Do we know if that budget has been presented to Waitley yet? No. So Waitley's town meeting is in June and they currently are... Uh, I don't I think they have an interim town administrator. Um, so that that was part of the discussion with the chief is talking to Waitley as well. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, there's nothing on the budget. You yep. on? Um, we have a, a fairly tight time frame today, so I'm fine with moving on from the budget and we can address it in further meetings. Um, okay. That was the last item on new business. Uh, for old business, we have an ARPA request for the uh, elementary school electrical repair and fuel removal. Can you give us a yep. quick little update on that? Yep, so the electrical repair, uh, if you recall, probably about a month ago, we noted that the plans did not have all the electrical, underground electrical wires, the contractors hit it, um, tore up some wires, we had to repair it. Our highway department donated some time. Um, the contractors are refusing to take any responsibility saying it wasn't on the plans, how are we supposed to know about it? Um, so there, there's a bill sitting out there for about $5,000 for that. Um, and then there we there was a fuel disposal surcharge or not surcharge charge of eighteen hundred dollars um, to remove the fuel from the original tank. I think one of the one of the one of them we kept. We moved the oil to I think the highway department. And then this was what was left over. So we tried to recycle as much of the um, remaining fuel as we could. And this wasn't included in the original bids or the original ARPA request for the, the project? Yeah, so I, yeah, the original bid included 600 gallons and they um, disposed of a total of 1,500. So it's for the difference. Okay. 
Okay, so it wasn't so, included in the original. So when we're saying disposed of, what are they doing with this fuel? They don't know. I mean, <laughs> this fuel that we're talking is heating oil, correct? Yes. It just... I know you said you were able to recycle some of it at the town garage or the highway department. There's no place else we could use that fuel. Um, well, I guess there are two things I'd say. One is we weren't asked. We were just given a change order. And I think the fuel has been disposed of. Um, so if we want to have a conversation with the school about how the process went, we can do that. But I don't, I don't know that we can actually get the fuel itself. Wow, well, it just you know we live in a world where people are you know financially strapped, and to think that eighteen hundred dollars worth of heating fuel was disposed of. I I guess I find that a little concerning. And, and I could be misunderstanding this whole thing. Um, it just seems like if we were able to bring some, you know, use some of it in another town building um, to, you know, minimize that amount, I, I ugh. Yeah I, yeah, I hate to hear that we paid money to get rid of the fuel that we paid money for. You know, always makes me <laughs> cringe a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I mean, we could certainly talk to talk to the school and get a clear understanding of what happened. And I mean, I would even feel better if it had gotten shipped to Frontier and they got to use it. You know, and we saved a little bit of fuel, even if we had to split that with the other towns. Um, do you? You want me to bring this back on Monday after talking to them? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's it's a done deal now. There's nothing we can do about it, but. I mean, we can not sign the change order request. And then yeah. what happens? Um, I don't know. <laughs> let, let's, right. let's let's shelve that particular part of it till next Monday um, and have you have a conversation with the school and get a better picture of what happened and whether there's, you know, it may, it may be that we they had, their hands were tied and there's regulations around what can and can't be done with that kind of stuff or something like that. I don't know. But I, I would feel better having a bigger, a better understanding of it before we sign off on the change order on that. Okay. Um, in terms of the electrical, um, you know, we've talked about this before. I don't love having the town be on the hook for it. Um, but it is what it is. And at the end of the day, someone's got to pay for that. And that's us. Um, so I, I would be comfortable with, uh, you know, approving the 5,000 for that. Uh, I don't know how you feel about that crystal. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately that's, we can't hold those contractors responsible for it if we weren't able to provide them information where it was. Um, yeah. Are there other people that could be held accountable for that money? Probably whoever drew the plans up and never provided us that information, if that's what happened. Um, but again, we still have to pay it at this point. And, you know, I don't know if it's even worth a dollar amount to spend time and money and legal and everything else on, you know, going after the people who installed it for not providing us a plan or whoever, you know. Yeah, if this was a half a million dollar mistake, that would be a different situation. But for a $5,000 mistake, I kind of agree that it's not worth the energy and time and money and all that other stuff to try to, you know, recoup that losses. We can kind of just 
grumble about it a little bit and move on. Yeah, and make sure our plans are updated with those locations now. So it doesn't happen again. Yeah, I made sure that they were. Yeah. Yeah, because we have we have another situation like this in ten years, and the same thing happens again. I will be less forgiving about the whole thing than <laughs> you know than we are this time. Right, um, but it's still on us if we don't have the updated plans. That's the problem. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah. Um. All right. So I would entertain a motion to approve five thousand dollars for the electrical. I motion we approve five thousand dollars for the electric repair at the elementary school. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two Hi, nothing. Crystal Drake Trump. Bye. Hi, Nathaniel Waring. Uh, two nothing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. And we also have, so that was the last of the separate new business or old business. Um, next up is select board updates. Um, just wanted to take a uh, moment to uh, mention that our our uh, former Board of Health um, chair, Caitlin Rock's husband, um, died this past weekend, Barry Rock. I uh, just want to take a quick moment of silence for him um, and for the family and, and you know, pass along Sunderland's condolences to that family. And that is all I had today. Uh, Crystal, did you have anything you wanted to go over? I've got nothing this that happened this week. Alrighty. Um that's it for us, Jeff. What do you have for us for town town ministry updates? I have a few. Um and I think that maybe I'm just gonna touch on them because we have you know, 13 minutes before the elementary school hearing. Um, but anything that you want to talk about or questions as I'm going through it. Uh, the first one is, well, first one's easy. Um, the Franklin County and North Bobbin Age-Friendly Project completed phase two, the Needs Assessment and Action Plan, and we got a nice uh, AARP certificate. So just wanted to mention that. And then we got the Regional Action Plan um, too, and I'll leave that in the office. Um, let's see. There, oh, the other thing that we don't have to take action on, um, wanted to make sure you were aware that there was a citizen's petition that's going to be on the warrant, and that was to allow um, Sunderland residents who are 16 or 17 years old to vote. So that's like those two things. Um, I just want to specify um, that that petition is is only for town elections. Uh, it would have no impact on state or federal elections. It would be to allow them to participate in uh, things like uh, town elections or town meeting, that kind of stuff. Right, local, um, because state law and federal law don't allow you to vote under 18. So yeah, yeah thank you. And just, just to clarify, if we do pass that, that needs to then go through our representative and uh, senator for a petition to the, um, the state house, is that correct? Right, so it's a warrant article uh, that would allow the town to petition because we'd need uh, special legislation from the state in order to do it. Correct. Okay, great. Thanks for the clarification. Um, so a couple of things that we talked about previously that are coming up again. Um, the phone system, when I mentioned we were maybe switching, um, the select board had suggested looking at a a no device option, um, sort of using our computers and personal or computers and phones. Um, there was concern among employees because not everybody has a town cell phone. So are we going to be asking them to use their personal? Um, and there was also a question of public perception. If the public sees us walking around texting or talking on our phones, are they going to think that we're not working? Um, and I think one of the third things we discovered is that Microsoft Teams, which is one of the options mentioned, actually has a, a minute limit on phone calls, which I haven't, I haven't heard about since the 90s. But um, that's so, you know, the the people we've been talking to at Verizon, the 
the devices would be free, the phones, um, unlimited calling for, I think it's $25 a month. And they have an app so that if you are not at your desk and you want to be making work calls, you can direct your cell phone to dial out like it looks like a work call and have your phone forward to your cell phone. So um, I think that is still the preferred option to go with Verizon. So I just, I don't know if you have any further concerns or want me to investigate anything else, or if you're okay with moving forward with that. I mean, from my perspective, I had mostly wanted us to sort of do our due diligence there and just kind of explore what other options were out there so that we didn't continue to pay for something that we could be getting a lot cheaper elsewhere. Uh, but it sounds like your valid concerns, um, you know, that, that all makes sense. I, I I kind of kind of assumed that was sort of where we're going to end up on that. Um, so unless Crystal has a objection, I, I would be fine with moving forward with the Verizon plan. Yeah, I'm fine with moving forward with the Verizon plan. It was the same thing. It was, you know, see what that team's had to offer or, you know, the, you know, the computer-based phone services had to offer. Um, if it's not a fit for us, it's not a fit, but at least we looked into it. Yeah. Um, which reminds me about something I wasn't going to talk about, but the mowing um, and trimming contract is up again, and I was able to add something about all electric equipment, so hopefully that'll be going out this week. Um, the other big thing, well, one of the big things is we had had um, the wastewater treatment plant operator, Rich Brenda, in couple months ago to talk about uh, sewer relining. And when he was here, we said, hey, it's a 10 year plan. We're talking about a, a larger project. And I guess since then, um, MassDEP has come back to him and said, okay, so what are you gonna do about these urgent issues? And he said, well, you know, we talked about it. It's part of this larger 10 year plan. And his feeling was, if we are gonna be doing a larger project, then we should start scoping that out and developing it so that um, we can demonstrate that we're making progress and we're not just putting off um, needed repairs. Otherwise, he recommends that we do, um, you know, the most urgent repairs and not a larger project. So I, I what I heard was a preference for you know, a, a larger project because of the cost savings and that we would probably have to go back multiple times to fix this little thing and then that little thing. Um, but I just wanted to confirm that, that that was correct. Or if you want to discuss it more, we can do that too. I mean, my, my concern when we first talked about it and my concern now still is also is not having the whole town pay for sewer stuff for a small part of the town that actually has access to, to sewer. Um, is that, you know, the, the sewer is supposed to sort of be cost neutral in, in many ways in terms of the town. The, the that cost should be, you know, absorbed by the, the sewer fees to the residents who have sewer. Um, so I still have questions about how that is going to end up being paid for, whether that's going to end up being something where they end up having to raise the rates for the sewer for the people who have sewer to cover that, or whether that's going to end up coming out of the general fund. I, I definitely still have questions there. Um, in terms of my preference uh, on, of spot spot fixing the, the small things versus the big project um if we can start moving forward with, with the big project and getting work on that i think that would be preferable i think it's a, it's a more effective way of doing things than fixing a bunch of little problems and then still coming back and doing a bigger project later um but that's just me i don't i don't have a lot of experience in that either so crystal yeah i mean obviously we want to It should be done the most cost effective way, obviously. But if we don't have a choice and have to do it pieces that are urgent, we don't have a choice, right? Yeah. yeah. So I guess, you know, whatever the next step is, whether it's, you know, I guess, I guess we just, you know, need Need to get a handle on exactly how, how that's going to proceed and 
Yeah, and my my impression from Rich was that that the DEP just didn't want us to be paying lip service and say, yeah, we'll do it in 10 years. And then nine years down the road, we've made no progress on it. So um, right. I could be totally wrong. They could come back and say, no, this is urgent. You need to fix this in the next, you know, 180 days, in which case I will apologize <laughs> and come back. Um, and then as far as how things are paid, yeah, we can certainly look into um, betterment fees. We also have the the sewer reserve fund, which is paid for by sewer users, comes out of sewer fees, so only sewer users contribute to that. Um, but yes, I, we will absolutely keep that in mind. Um, and then I think we're gonna save a conversation on ditches for another time. Um, but we did get a uh, request, and I don't know if you had an opportunity to see it or not. Um, Frontier would like to use some of their excess and deficiency um, funds, $200,000, to do uh, repairs and maintenance on the school, um, including a fire alarm panel system. Excess and deficiency is basically free cash for the schools. Um, so it's money that had been budgeted that they didn't spend um, on what it was budgeted for. So they're asking just to reallocate it. So I can bring that back next week too, but I, I did want to mention it since we got to that. All right. It's not like in the next week that fire panel needs to be replaced. No, we have 45 days to respond. And if we don't, then they can use the money. So I think it's more of a convenience. Yeah. Assume. Um, yeah, and if I remember calling correctly, this was, was one of the bigger items that had, had come up in the uh, Frontier Capital Committee meetings um, as being something that needed, needed to be done, but not, you know, tomorrow. Um, so, yeah. All right. Um, we can talk about that more next time. Um, as you can see, we're running out of time before our 6 o'clock appointment. So, anything else you want to touch on in the next two minutes, or should we uh, call it here and then get ready for the 6 o'clock? meeting i have nothing else all right um all right I guess, our motion we adjourn to... all right uh seconded we have a motion or do, or wait, do we need to wait, wait do you i don't think you want to adjourn do you we're just all switching right. so we could go into that next meeting without calling to order in that one if we leave it open yeah okay, yeah, I think then... it open, yeah yeah i i recall my motion all right. We will see everybody in a minute over in the other Zoom call. Okay. And anybody who might be watching, it, the link is on the agenda. Thank okay. you. Thank you, everybody.